Hi, this is Dale Buchanan, the host of Puppy Talk Podcast. Before we get started today, I wanted to let you know of my new book, The Complete Puppy Training Manual. It's available on Amazon in four formats Kindle ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. You can find it on Amazon right now. It's called The Complete Puppy Training Manual, and I will put a link in the show notes of this episode. Welcome to Puppy Talk episode number 95. I'm your host, Dale Buchanan, and today I'm going to talk about setting realistic expectations for your puppy. Recently, I've been getting a lot of phone calls and emails from people who have very unrealistic expectations for their puppies. They want their puppy to be absolutely perfect, never barking, never jumping, never pulling on a leash, never actually being a puppy. And they want these behaviors to stop right away. When I educate them on how a puppy learns and how you have to be patient when working with a puppy, they kind of change their perspective a little bit that maybe their expectations were unrealistic. When you work with a puppy, it's very similar to working with a young child. They're only capable of learning and doing things at their own rate, at their own pace. You don't want to rush the puppy into learning too much, too soon, or developing pressure in them that they have to learn everything and be perfect right away. First of all, no dogs, no puppies are perfect. No humans are perfect. There's nothing in this world that is perfect. The car you have isn't perfect. The house you have isn't perfect. The town you live in also isn't perfect. You could sit there all day and pick apart flaws of everything in your life. What's the use of doing that besides adding a lot of frustration and aggravation that you don't need? This creates stress and this creates multiple health problems internally. You don't need that. What you learn to do is you learn to accept puppies, people, jobs, living environments, and so forth as it is. And you learn to adjust to those. You have to remember that a human, from the time they start going to school at five years old when they go into kindergarten, or maybe even four years old, through high school and college, they have anywhere from 12 to 16 or 17 or more years of school. And then they go into the world to get a job and maybe create a family and settle down somewhere in a great city. This is what most people do. However, new puppy owners expect their puppies to learn everything right away. I've done another podcast on this called Be Patient With Your Puppy. You have to be patient with them. You have to be patient with yourself. A lot of times, puppies come into our lives to teach us something, such as patience or less frustration or less anxiety or less worry. But a lot of times new puppy owners get puppies and they end up being more anxious, more frustrated, more worry, and more of these things they were trying to get rid of. So the puppy's not being an emotional support animal like they thought, they're being a lot more work. And a lot of this frustration and aggravation and anxiety comes from unrealistic expectations with your puppy. I'm here to tell you something because remember this is episode 95. I've done this podcast for three and a half years. I've trained thousands of puppies. I've talked to tens of thousands of people on the phone. I've done articles. I've been on the news. All of these things are a testimony of my level of experience working with puppies and their owners. Puppies are going to make mistakes. They're not going to be potty trained immediately. They're not going to stop pulling on the leash immediately. They may bark a few times when somebody comes into the house. That's okay. They may jump on certain people that they love. That's okay. They may not do everything exactly as you want. Puppy training isn't about making a puppy perfect. Puppy training is about teaching your puppy to listen and engage with you and have their obedience level under control. And this is the key. It's under control, but it's not perfect. You don't want to make the puppy a robot. The puppy needs to be a puppy, just like a child would need to be a child. You don't want a three, four, five, eight-year-old child to act like an adult. 
That would just be weird. The child needs to be and act like a child. The puppy needs to be and act like a puppy. Puppies are going to throw you a curveball all the time, and that's part of raising a puppy. In my book, The Complete Puppy Training Manual, the very beginning, the first chapter is, owning a puppy is a lot of work, and it really is. But owning a puppy will teach you how to do things better in your own life, how to be more patient, more resilient less anxious, more positive, and less worry. The key of all of that is to be more positive. A lot of times I go to puppy owners' houses and all they focus on is all the bad things the puppy does. And I say, okay, let's get out a piece of paper. Write down all the things you like about this puppy, all of the things it does good. Well, it knows its name. It knows how to sit. It knows how to lay down. It goes to bed early. It doesn't wake me up at night. It never pottied in its crate, and so on and so on. So they list all of these positive things. And then there's one or two things that the puppy does that really irritate the owner, and that's all they focus on. Well, it had an accident in the house last week. It never comes when I call it back when it's in the backyard all the way back at the end of the fence. And these are just little things that the puppy is going to learn in time with training and with patience. So there's no need to only focus on all of the negative things about the puppy. Imagine with your significant other, your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, husband, wife, that you only focus on the negative qualities of that person or your children or your coworkers. If you only focus on the negative qualities and everybody has them, if you only focus on the negative, you're not going to like that person very much. You have to focus on the things that you love about that person and not so much about the things that the person does that irritate you. And it's the same with the puppy. But a lot of owners forget the positive with the puppy outweighs the negative with the puppy. If the negative outweighs the positive, it's time for you probably not to have a dog, give the dog to a friend, and think about other animals that may be more suitable for you, like a cat or bird, or fish, or something like that. If you only focus on the negative qualities of your puppy, then it's not going to work. So you have to focus on the positive. I hope this information was helpful to you. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website, puppytalkpodcast.com. Have a great day. This is Dale Buchanan, host of Puppy Talk Podcast. I have an announcement of a new book that I just published called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback, soon to be available on audiobook. You can find out all the details of this book using the link in the show notes. It's called Potty Training Your Puppy. It's a comprehensive book with a simple and effective way to help potty train your puppy, and it really works. Check out the link in the show notes.